but uh, I thought I had become a little bit more organized and uh, able to uh, talk a little bit quicker. Uh, so the, the problem now is that I still have some slides left, uh, which I'm desperate to tell you about. Um, so I think I'm going to use half an hour now, which means that we probably should stop when I'm finished here. And that means that we move the uh, presentations for next time. Uh, and hopefully we can do double of that and catch up somehow. I'm, I'm getting a little bit desperate and I'm talking too much. Uh, but let's see how we, we can uh, manage this. This is fantastic, uh, I have to say. This, this is, I never believed that this would be true, but it is true. Uh, there's so much evidence which supports it that it, it's just amazing. Uh, so th this was done originally by Henriette van Praak published in Nature in 1999. Uh, what she did was taking the idea of the en enriched environment, where you have seen that there are new dendrites being made and all sorts of things, and then trying to see how little does it take to actually see a difference between an enriched environment and a normal environment. So she basically took mice and divided them into two groups, those which were in a normal case, so basically 50 centimeters by 25 centimeters, a little bit of sawdust in the bottom, and that's sort of it. Uh, so it's not a very brilliant life to live, uh, you could say. Then she had another bunch of mice here, and the only thing they got in their cage was uh, a running wheel uh, and free access to the running wheel. Uh, and mice like running wheels, so, so they would spend at least an hour running in this running wheel, each of them, every day for uh, five to six weeks. Then she would test them in the Morris water maze and do some electrophysiology and histology uh, on their brains. Now the Morris water maze is what is up here. So what you see here is that uh, we have the path centimeters and we have the latency. So the path is how long they have been swimming in order to find the platform, basically. So both groups start out by 800 centimeters. It takes them up about 37 sec seconds to find it. And then they train for six days here. Uh, and you can see gradually that the runner group manages better than the control group. So simply having access to a running wheel in your cage as a mouse makes you better at finding your way in the Morris water maze, or makes you better at remembering where this um, platform is. Uh, an alternative interpretation, which I was presented for, and I wasn't really prepared for that, but uh, someone raised it actually the day before yesterday, uh, is that uh, it could be that these running mice are simply more tired, so they don't want to spend so much time swimming around, whereas the control rat mice here are fresh and they can swim around. But that's actually not the case because there's quite a lot of time in between the time that they've been running and the testing here, so it's probably not fatigue, but it's still a good point. Uh, now, what is interesting then is that uh, in this study, they also did the histology and the electrophysiology. Now, this is long-term potentiation. We're going to come back to that on uh, Thursday, but just very briefly, what you see here is a huge difference. Uh, so the amount of long-term potentiation, so the ability of uh, inducing changes in uh, transmission in the hippocampus is quite a lot larger in the runner group than in the control group, as you can see here. Uh, also, when doing histochemistry on the brain of the control mice and the runner mice here, you see a clear difference here. The green ones are old neurons, which were made more than 24 hours ago. The red ones, there is one there, there's maybe one there, uh, are newly made neurons. What you see here is that if you count, there are much more of the red neurons, the newborn neurons, in the runner groups. And this is what has been found in almost, well, in all of the studies which have done it, uh, similar to this, that running physical ac activity makes neurons in the hippocampus survive longer, 
and it's still being debated, may also induce more of them to be made. Uh, but at least those that are made survive better uh, than uh, if you don't do exercise. So that there is a cute angle to this also, which is that this actually only works if you do this experiment like this, that you put the running wheel into the cage. If you do more or less the opposite and take the mouse out of the cage and put it on a running wheel or a treadmill, it doesn't work. You almost see the opposite, that the mice develop less neurons and are worse at finding their way. Isn't this wonderful? It means that you have to do exercise voluntarily. It doesn't work if you're forced to do it, like when you take the mouse out of the cage and you put it on the platform or on, on the uh, running wheel. The reason why this is, has been demonstrated is that it is very stressful for the mouse to be taken out of the cage. Just being handled by a human hand, which comes and grabs it, is really stressful for a mouse being forced to run at a point where it has no desire to be running, and especially in experiments like this, to ensure that it keeps running, you will put some electric current uh, at, at the bottom of the running wheel or, or of the treadmill and make sure that it gets an electrical shock whenever it stops running. Uh, so that's stressful. What happens when you have stress? You produce cortisol. Cortisol is like poison for these neurons. So what you see is that neurons which were newly made die off, and even neurons which were made a long time ago also die off in the hippocampus. And the mice are not able to find their way in a maze. So cortisol works just the opposite. So you should do exercise, but not in a stressful way, is the main finding here. It also works in rats, and this is even more uh, convincing data in many ways. This is in the old rats, uh, which are obviously less good at finding uh, the platform in the Morris water maze. So they start out again, 37 seconds here, but they don't really become much better. Uh, so they end up by maybe 32 seconds. Uh, they also use, well, 500 uh, centimeters uh, to find the platform on day one as on day five. But now look, if you have these old rats doing exercise on a daily basis, uh, that's these ones, uh, OR means old rats running. Uh, and if you follow these, they're actually down here. Uh, the other two groups that you have here is young control rats and young uh, rats uh, doing exercise every day. Uh, so you see the old rats actually become much, much better even the, than uh, the uh, young rats. Uh, you can also see it down here. So a little bit of exercise, that's all it takes to uh, uh, prevent some of the uh, degeneration that you have in uh, elderly subjects, apparently. We know part of the signaling. Uh, we know some of the mechanisms which are involved. Uh, compound called brain-derived sorry, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF. Uh, it's this molecule, doesn't really make much sense. Uh, but one important thing is that it's being released through exercise. This is sedentary individuals uh, which have a certain amount of uh, uh, BDNF in the blood. If you do exercise on a daily basis, you have enormously in, uh, increased levels of exercise. And this stays up for quite a long time after you have done the exercise, up to three weeks, as you can see here. So just <coughs> doing exercise increases BDNF. Why is BDNF increased when you do exercise? It's maybe because BDNF is also a stimulant for uh, uh, making new uh, um, capillaries in the muscles. It's also a stimulant for uh, making new blood cells, red blood cells in the bone marrow, uh, and in addition, of course, uh, stimulating growth of uh, neurons, differentiation, survival, and improving the function of the neurons uh, through specific receptors on 
the neurons. So it might be that it's a relatively non-specific uh, reaction. When you do exercise, you want to have more blood supply to your muscles, your working muscles. Uh, you want to increase the capillaries, you want to increase the number of red blood cells. And then, fortunately, BDNF also crosses the blood-brain barrier and can have a good effect on your neurons. It could also be a much more specific signal that in relation to exercise uh, that the brain needs this signaling and actually wants to uh, create these uh, effects uh, uh, internally also. So we, we know some, some of the signaling pathways. There are probably many other compounds which are being released which can mediate some of these effects, but this at least is uh, very well described.